Welcome to EdU2. When people think of ancient Egypt, they think of all the famous sites that are still around to visit and see. The pyramids at Giza are often what people think of as they're shown in cartoons and movies, and they were built 4,500 years ago. Many people are fascinated with the ancient Egyptians, and they are often shown walking like this, which they didn't. Thank you, Fact Robot. Let's get into some of the real stories about people that lived there for thousands of years and talk about why their civilizations lasted so long and had such a lasting influence. Ancient Egypt along the Nile River. And the Nile River was a great place for a civilization. While almost all civilizations lived along rivers, the Nile River had some special things about it which made it especially good. The Nile is the longest river in the world, which not only provided water for Egyptians and also Nubians living near the southern Nile, it helped transportation and crops, especially in the Nile Delta. A delta is where a river fans out near the ocean into smaller streams, which gives water to a larger area of land. The Nile River also flows north, which helped transport stone from the south to build with. And it floods regularly, once a year, bringing silt, which is very fine soil, good for farming crops. Ancient Egypt lasted a very long time. So, before getting to the timeline of ancient Egypt, let's look at some more recent events to compare and get a better idea of how long ancient Egypt lasted. Here's a single block of the timeline. The World Wide Web, which was the beginning of the modern internet, was invented 30 years ago, which is this much on the timeline block. The light bulb was invented about 150 years ago, this much on the timeline. And the newspaper was invented about 400 years ago, which is the entire block. This is the entire timeline of ancient Egypt. And here's the block. So you have a better idea of how long it lasted. The first period of ancient Egyptian civilization, the pre-dynastic period, was much like most civilizations in the Bronze Age. People farmed near the river, shared a common language and culture, which lasted about 2,000 years from 5,000 to 3,100 BCE. The Archaic Period started around 3,100 BCE when Menes founded the capital of ancient Egypt in Memphis, in the north, near the Nile River Delta. Memphis became a large, beautiful city famous for its white walls. Menas made pharaohs the most powerful leaders of Egypt. From then on, pharaohs were thought to be part king, part god, and their families ruled as part of their dynasty, or period of rule by the same family. After the Archaic period, the Old Kingdom began in 2686 BCE. The Old Kingdom's first pharaoh, Djoser, was the first to ask for a pyramid to be built as a tomb for his body after death. It looks different than most people's ideas of a pyramid. It's a step pyramid. The Old Kingdom was a time of peace and good fortune, and the most famous pyramids at Giza were built under the 5th and 6th dynasties. There was a problem with building giant stone pyramids, though. It's very, very expensive. Priests gained more power towards the end of this period, and the wealth of the kingdom declined. The old kingdom ended in chaos in 2181 BCE. But don't worry, the kingdom will be back. Memphis remained capital after the old kingdom, and the first intermediate period lasted for nearly 100 years until 2055 BCE. The first intermediate period had many rulers, wars, 
starvation, and disease. It was not a good time to live in Egypt. A Theban prince, Menuntep, managed to gain power of all of the kingdom and unite it once again, ending this period. The Middle Kingdom had powerful pharaohs once again and worked to regain its wealth. They captured Nubia, the civilization to the south, and expanded trade into Asia. They also continued building pyramids and had the first female ruler of Egypt. That wasn't Cleopatra. It was Queen Sobenafru. After her death, the problem with building new pyramids happened once again, throwing the region into chaos for nearly 200 years. For the second intermediate period, 1786 to 1567 BCE. But this isn't the last time you'll see the kingdoms. The new kingdom began with Amos I reunited the kingdom in 1567 BCE. The new kingdom established one of the world's first great empires, conquering the Nubians and moving north into Asia's Euphrates River Valley as well. We know the most about the pharaoh's tombs built during this time because Tutankhamun's tomb was found nearly undisturbed, and we will talk more about him later. Once again, after 500 years, great building projects and invasions made the kingdom decline. The last two periods, the Third Intermediate Period and the Late Period, were again ones of decline and unification. In the end, Greeks and Persians had built great empires that were bigger and more powerful than Egypt. Cleopatra, the famous queen of Egypt, was able to keep Egypt independent for a while through diplomacy. But eventually the Romans decided to conquer it, ending its timeline in 30 BCE. One of the most famous pharaohs was Tutankhamun of the New Kingdom, often called King Tut. For centuries after Egypt declined, Thieves took things from the pyramids and tombs of the dead pharaohs because they often held valuable items. Even though these things are important to study history, they were stolen and sold. Even mummies were stolen as they were ground up into dust and sold as medicine, which is not at all good for anyone's health and gross. Egyptologists People who study ancient Egypt worked to protect the artifacts of Egypt so they could study them. Tutankhamun is famous as his tomb was quite small and discovered in 1922, almost completely untouched. Tutankhamun, I'm just going to call him King Tut as well, became pharaoh when he was just nine years old. Because he was so young, he relied upon advisors around him to make important decisions about leading the country. And the most important decisions he made were about religion. His tomb was one of the smallest because he died at age 18. So he was only a pharaoh for nine years. Tombs and treatment of the dead were very important in ancient Egypt. The pyramids were built as tombs for pharaohs. The Egyptian Book of the Dead was a guide on funerals and spells to protect the dead, and it was written on papyrus, which was invented in Egypt. It was like paper made from a small plant. Preservation of a person's heart and body was important for the afterlife. People also tried to bring their stuff and even their cats. It was believed that after they died, the god Osiris opened the door to the afterlife. Anubis, god of the dead, would guide the person to have their heart weighed. It was thought that doing good deeds in life would give someone a light heart, while doing bad things would make the heart heavy. Every person's heart would be weighed against a feather. So, the god of wisdom and writing also, the scribe of the gods would write down its weight. If the heart was lighter than the feather, 
the person might go to the land of the two fields. If it was heavier, Amut was quite happy about that. Amut was a god with a crocodile head, and it was believed that if you did something really bad during your lifetime, Amut would eat you. As long as your body had been preserved, or mummified, made into a mummy, if your heart was lighter than a feather, and if someone had written down your name, you were off to sail on Ra, the sun god's boat, into the land of two fields. From there, your soul could visit both your family and enjoy the afterlife. Believing this happens after death, or being eaten by a crocodile god, also caused people to behave pretty well. Now, if you're neither dead nor royalty in Egypt, what would your life be like? Egypt had very defined social classes, which was very common. Royalty, pharaohs, and their families had the highest positions in ancient Egypt society. Nobles, the most powerful people in government after pharaohs and priests, were the next most powerful class. After then, it was soldiers, artisans, and scribes, the people that wrote official documents in society. Hieroglyphic writing was learned by few people and used for royal documents written by scribes. Many people used demotic script for everyday writing. Hieroglyphics are understood by Egyptologists thanks to the discovery of the Rosetta Stone, which translated hieroglyphics into demotic and Greek. Some of the first history, with a capital H, created in history, little h, was the Greeks studying Egypt. So the Greeks provided many secondary sources on Egypt, and with the Rosetta Stone, modern historians can read their primary texts. Getting back into the hierarchy, farmers and laborers were the citizens with the least social status, and slaves were at the bottom of the hierarchy, not being considered citizens, but possessions. While hierarchy in Egypt was similar to many other ancient civilizations, most of its citizens enjoyed a better life than in many other places at that time. Women had more rights, they were allowed to own property, sign contracts, and even become rulers of Egypt. Happiness was considered important for all citizens, mat, the idea of harmony and balance in all aspects of one's life, was thought to lighten one's heart for the afterlife, and was represented by its own goddess, mat. Ancient Egyptians enjoyed sports including hockey, handball, archery, and Egyptians even invented bowling. Children were taught to swim while young. Swimming was popular, and kids played many water games. Senate, a board game, was also popular, which was like the game of life, based on playing a story of living and the afterlife. Music, dance, gymnastics, and wrestling were also popular, and among upper classes, hunting large or small animals was a favorite pastime. Education in ancient Egypt for most children was done by parents. Most children grew up and did the same jobs as their parents did. Children of royalty, both boys and girls, since women in royal families were also involved in government would have formal schooling in writing, math, geography, cartography, or study of maps, science, ceremonial dance, and music. Boys in wealthy families would go to school and studied what were called wisdom texts with lessons about literacy and practical information for careers. Many Egyptian students' families wanted important jobs in the royal palace, the temples or army, a government job, tax collector, or even practicing medicine with priests. Middle-class families might send sons for an apprenticeship, 
which was learning a craft or skill like creating jewelry, pottery, music, or weaving. And for a fee, children would live with the master working for free while learning from them. Some boys, especially in the New Kingdom, joined the military, which was considered very important but was very hard and involved years of training. Ancient Egypt lasted for 5,000 years. In its late period, Egypt had expanded its ruling further west into Africa, north and west into Asia, and even onto the island of Cyprus. It was expensive and difficult to rule over this much land, and at the same time, the Roman Empire was the most powerful in the region and looking to grow larger. Egypt had already adopted Greek into its language, as ancient Greece was also very influential, and Egypt became less powerful in comparison. The last ruler of Egypt, Cleopatra, knew that Egypt's military was no match for the Romans' power and formed an alliance with Julius Caesar, Emperor of Rome, trying to keep Egypt's independence. Things didn't work out well for Caesar in Rome, and when he died, the Romans took over Egypt in 30 BCE. A civilization that lasted 5,000 years is difficult to sum up in a few minutes and Egypt had periods of peace, wealth, and power, as well as war, decline, and created some of the great wonders of the ancient world. The study of Egypt is what inspired the creation of the subject of history itself. Egypt is unique for the length of time its ancient civilization lasted, the amount of rights given to women, and its influence upon history that still fascinates people today. We hope you enjoyed our visit to Egypt, and remember kids, say no to mummy cures. Bye for now. Bye.